Beekeeping is like the ocean. You turn your back on your bees and you could be in for a big surprise. This is Tanya from Lovely Greens and recently I made a beekeeping boo-boo. It's been a very busy couple of weeks for me. I've been stocking orders, I've had guests for TT, um, just entertaining, busy in the garden, and I haven't been able to get out to see my bees. So it's been actually a couple of weeks since I've been out to visit them. This is terrible, um, especially during the swarming season. Anyway, so last night I went to go check on them and I lifted up the roof on the blue hive and this is what I found. Basically, wild comb. Regrettably, I had to cut down all of this comb, but fortunately, I can use the beeswax and the honey in my beauty products. Check out lovelygreens-shop.com for those. But, as you can see inside my hive, I had another dilemma. In the place that I'd forgotten to put in the last frame, they'd actually built a perfect wedge of beeswax honeycomb essentially and it was completely filled with honey for the most part it just looked exactly like the comb should look if you had a frame in there but I had to take it out so I used my hive tool and pried it out I gave a piece to a friend of mine who was at the allotment at the time and then I bundled the rest of it back home Once I got the honeycomb home, I strained some of the honey off of it using an ordinary kitchen sieve. Now, most of this honey that you see is uncapped honey. That means that it was in the comb, but it didn't have that wax capping over the cell. And this also means that that honey has a bit higher water content in it still. So it might not last as long as honey that has been capped. So the plan was, and is, to put this in a jar and to use it as quickly as possible. To get the rest of the honey out of the comb, I use the crush and strain method, which is one of the easiest techniques for extracting honey. And it is exactly how it sounds. You crush the honeycomb up, you can use a potato masher or a wooden spoon like I've used, and then you strain it through a membrane into another container. Now I've seen this online with various series of buckets and whatnot. It's very simple for smaller quantities like this. You can use an ordinary kitchen strainer, put it over a bowl, use a cheesecloth to make sure that you catch any little bits of beeswax, pour it all in, and then you want to let it sit for a day, even two days, to allow the honey to pass through that filter and into the lower container. While that honey is filtering through, you should probably keep it in a safe place in the kitchen away from windows. Bees will be attracted to the scent of the honey. And then perhaps even put a kitchen towel or even an ordinary towel over the top just to make sure that no debris goes in. And then after a day or two, you're left with loads of honey and beeswax to use in projects. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions whatsoever, leave me a comment below. And check out some of my other beekeeping videos, including how my bees got a blue hive in March, how I ordinarily extract honey using an electric extractor, and uh, how I moved a colony of my bees in the car in April. And feel free also to subscribe to Lovely Greens. I post regular videos on my channel that include beekeeping, gardening tips, beauty recipes, and DIY projects. Thanks again.